Hey there, this is Priscilla Shire, and you're watching Chosen Journey with Trend Center Sense. What up, man? It's your boy, Trend Center Sense, and of course, this is Chosen Journey. I have a very special individual, uh, an author, a best selling New York Times best selling author, teacher, spiritual leader, actress. Uh, man, the list, it, it, it goes on and on and on. I'm so thankful to have you on this platform. Uh, Priscilla Shire. Thank you for having me. I'm grateful. Thank you for letting me be How here. How are you doing? I'm doing really good. Yeah, a lot of exciting things happening in our ministry, but also just with our family, mm. you know, so just seeing our sons launch out into life and flourish, it's a it's a good thing. Yeah. So you're in town, of course, because you're promoting the movie, yes. The Forge. Yeah. Talk about it. Um, I just want to tell you one thing before you get into it. Okay. Okay, because I've seen the movie. Okay. And um, it's so funny um, because of the role that you play, you play the mother, <laughs> yeah. single mother, um, and teenage son. It's like 19 or 20, 19, right? 19, okay. yeah, in the movie. Uh-huh. Let me tell you something. When I saw the movie, mm-hmm. I was I felt like I was looking at myself. And the role that you were playing was my mother. <laughs> really? Yeah, I was that kid. Really? I was that kid. Yeah. Um, so let's, I just wanted to just let you know that. (laughs) So let's just dive into, you know, the process of the forge and diving into your role and the character of who you were. Thank you for asking. Okay. So the forge, you know, for anybody who maybe saw and enjoyed war room, which can you believe that's been a decade ago? Wow. 10 years. Wow. They'll enjoy the forge. It's similar universe, similar world as War Room. Mm-hmm. Similar some of the characters are the same and introducing all new characters as well. And it centers around Isaiah, that 19-year-old you talked about. Mm -hmm. And he's a good kid, but he's floundering. He's just sort of floundering. He's trying to find his way, and he's having a hard time with that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is normal. This is what happens with young men and young women at that stage where they're coming out of teenagehood and they're going into adulthood. And Isaiah just doesn't have a lot of momentum and focus and precision about his future. Mm. He's not growing up into manhood in terms of responsibility and character the way he should. Mm. And when you meet Cynthia, I play his mother, Cynthia, right at the beginning. She's at that point mothers get to. <laughs> Where you yeah. like, let me tell you yeah. what we're not going to do yeah. <laughs> in yeah. here, you, sir. You were getting a little fed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, you know, I have three sons, and they're about that age. They are 21 and 20, just turned 20, and um, 15. And I totally get it where you are just needing to shake them awake and say, like, it's time. Mm. You're, you a whole man. Let's mm. go. Wow. You know? So I resonated with that. Mm. And I also know the feeling, which is what this film centers on, is that this mother is asking God, would you send some men into my son's life who will call manhood out of him? Mm. Uh, because it doesn't matter how great of a mother Cynthia is, what she can't do is hand him his man card. Mm. Another brother has to do that. Wow. So she just says, Lord, would you put s- somehow, will you bring some men into my son's life? And then the film is about God answering that prayer. Mm. And again, I'm endeared to that because while my boys, thank God, have a great father, uh, Jerry and I have been married for 25 years. They have a great grandfather. They have great uncles in their life. What I do know is that when someone outside of our biological family has impacted my sons, like their coach, if they have a coach they respect and admire, and he does not just care about their athleticism, but also cares about their character, Mm. when he challenges them, he can say the same thing I've been saying to them for three years. Right. But then that coach says it, or that man they admire because they're excellent in their craft and in their industry. Mm. When that man affirms them, or that man challenges them, They hear it and absorb it differently. Mm. So in this film, you get to see what happens when an older, wiser brother makes space in his life for a young man and says, come go with me. Let me show you what manhood looks like. Mm. Uh, Of course, we have uh, Priscilla Shire. She's in the building and we're talking about this movie, The Forge. And that's funny that you brought that out because I noticed all the mentors in the movie with your son and... um, like I was saying, I felt like it was me. Um, can you talk about the importance of roles of different people? Um, discipleship. You you talk about that a lot. That's um, exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Can, can you kind of just dive in on that? Yeah. Well, um, discipleship is one of those kind of biblical theological terms that honestly we don't really know what to do with because it sounds good, but we're not actually sure what it means. 
and this mm. movie puts flesh on it because it really is supposed to be what being a believer is about. Like if you've placed faith in Jesus Christ, that is a free gift. Thank God that it is. If you're on your way to heaven and you've placed faith in Jesus, you've received that gift, it's completely free. That's not supposed to be the end of the journey. That's the beginning. Mm. Discipleship is what comes next. This is spiritual growth, and this comes at a cost, mm. which is why many people are believers, but um, very few are disciples. Wow. Where we've chosen to surrender all. Wow. And uh, Jesus said in Luke chapter 9, for anybody that wishes to follow me, they're going to take up their cross, deny themselves, and do the following. Mm. Um sounds like surrender to me. Yeah. That sounds like letting go of some things that we hold dear and we have a tendency to grip onto, like intangibles, like ambitions that we have for our life and wow. plans we have for our life and entertainment choices or habits or things that aren't necessarily sin, but we've prioritized them more than we've prioritized him, mm. which makes them idols. Yeah. So then he asks us to, discipleship means letting go of anything that is in first place. Mm. so that he can be in first place. And that's costly. Yeah. Yeah. So. Wow. You've touched on some very important points. Um, one, you mentioned, I guess, the accountability or you talked about a certain part where you said the things that were important to you as an individual. Yeah. yeah. Has Priscilla Shire <laughs> in her journey going through these things, is there an example that you can... Oh my goodness! How, how many do you want? I brother? mean, you know, we can. You know, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? You know, um, because we're talking about a film, I will tell you one connected to um, filming and to acting and to making movies. Uh, this was not a plan I had for my life at all. You couldn't have told me in a million years I would ever be in films. Really? No, I'm not an actress by trade, or um, it. it I mean, it, it would be like somebody telling you that you're going to fly to the moon one day as an astronaut. You'd be looking at them like, no, I'm not. <laughs> you know, I never yeah. thought about doing that. Yeah. But when the directors called me to do War Room, they had their, they, their wives had read some of my books and they'd been at some of my conferences. And so they called and asked me, mm. would I be in War Room? And I said no at first because I thought... You know how we've all seen movies before that could have been good, but that one person right. was in there that right. they that could messed act. it all up. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, y'all not gonna put me in this movie oh, and wow. I mess up <laughs> the ministry of it because their movies are great. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was like, I don't want to water that down. So I said no at first, but then ended up they asked me to really consider it. They said, seriously, we just feel compelled that you should do this. So wow. would you pray about it? Would you read the script? We think when you do, you'll see this is not just a movie. It's a ministry. Mm. And anybody who's seen these movies know right. it is ministry, it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I did the film. It did so well. People were impacted beyond what I could imagine. I've met so many, oh my gosh, strangers, people in the in other parts of the world where I've been traveling and they come up to me, they don't even speak the language, but I can tell wow. they were impacted by War Room. And I've gotten to pray for people in Jesus' name that are not believers. And wow. So it's the impact was huge and I had fun doing it. Mm. But it was a thing that I realized I may never do again. Mm. Um, it was a hard thing for the journey of our family. Um, uh, it was a hard thing for our marriage. You said you watched an interview with, um, or someone was telling me they watched an interview with me and my husband recently. And my husband yeah, describes right. yeah. how hard it was for, for the two of us during that filming process. So I realized I may never do this again. Mm. And I could feel the Lord asking me, are you willing to surrender this? That if you never get to do a film again, as much as you enjoyed it, as much as you loved it, as great a ministry impact is it, but if it's the only opportunity you ever get, either because another opportunity never comes or because one comes, but the dynamic of filming a movie and what comes with that, um, the loss of anonymity, all that stuff, if that's too hard on you and your husband, too hard on you and your family dynamic, are you willing to let it go? Wow. And I have a journal entry from 10 years ago. But the impact was so profound, and I realized I loved it. I enjoyed it, would love to do it again. But I could feel the Holy Spirit saying, but are you willing not to? Mm. And surrender that to me, that desire to me if I ask you to. Mm. So I did. And it wasn't easy. Okay. It wasn't easy, um, but it was worth it. Okay. Because I could just feel his favor, his divine nod of approval that yeah. I got you. Don't worry. Wow. Yeah. We speak about surrendering, and 
I surrender all. Yeah. <laughs> Can you dive into it? Yeah. Um, you remember back in the day in church when we had hymnals? Yeah. Like a hymn book. It was like a red cover, hard cover book. And, you know, like victory in Jesus was in there. Great is thy faithfulness. All the stuff we used to just sing. Mm -hmm. And one of those songs was I Surrender All. Just a sweet, simple declaration of full allegiance to Jesus Christ. This is a reminder to the body of Christ mm. that our spiritual growth will require surrender. And it's not a one-time thing. It's daily saying to the Lord and in each season of our life saying to the Lord, Lord, what is it you're asking me to release for your kingdom purposes now? Mm. Is it the expectations I had of what my family dynamic would look like? Is it um, the release of a habit or um, an entertainment choice that I've kind of absorbed into my life and I realize it's not wrong, but I love it too much? Right. What is it, Lord, that I can let go of for your for the sake of your name, the sake of your glory, so that nothing stands in the way of me being in complete alignment with you? Mm. Um, so it's just a reminder to God's people of what it is that the Lord requires of us if we're going to experience the abundant life that he died on the cross to give us. Right. Yeah. So with your busy schedule that you have and so many things that you're involved with, like, how do you balance those challenges, like, are you do you feel are there constant attacks that you get? Yeah, in surrendering, like, oh, how does yeah. that process work? Like, oh yeah, it's it's a in your it's, walk. It's a constant struggle because you know we are flesh. Right, our bodies want what our bodies want. We all are are wired. Our personality, our propensities are wired in specific ways. So yeah, it's a constant struggle. And there's an enemy. There there's an enemy who wants us to not be fully in allegiance with Christ right. in our life. Right. So we're in constant. We have to do what Ephesians 6 said, stand firm against the schemes of the enemy. This It's not a playground. It's a battlefield where you have to be alert and on your guard and constantly in communion with the Lord. So it's not um, an easy thing, but it becomes easier as you build up a track record with him, like where you realize, you know what? He carried me through that season. He got me through wow. that season. You know, I've, I'm not one of those serious, pe serious journalers. You know, how people, there are some people that have like a diary and they write down everything that's gone on in their day or their week or their month. I've never been serious about journaling, mm. but I have kept a slight record of my life. And I'm so glad I have now. Like when the Holy Spirit's spoken to me about something or when I've released something to him and I wasn't sure how it was going to work out. Mm. But then when you look back, you have evidence that if he did it then, he can do it now. Wow! So it becomes easier as you walk with Christ to be reminded of his faithfulness when you just keep a record that he's a sustainer right. and you got proof of it from your own journey, mm. you know? Yeah. So. What, I ask all my guests this question at this point, uh, what scripture is resonating with you right now? Right now. Right now. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> there are quite I mean, a I know few, it's a, but. It's a, Grand, yeah, question. that's a big question. Yeah, no. Okay, I'm trying to think. If let's see, I would say right this minute would be Revelation chapter two. You know, in the first couple of chapters of Revelation, that's where uh, Jesus is um, telling John these warnings to the church. Right. It's, it's all these churches, one after the other, and in Revelation chapter two, he commends the church at Ephesus for all these good things they're doing. Mm -hmm. But then he says in Revelation, I believe, two verse five. He says, but I have this one thing against you, that you have left your first love. Mm. That, I mean, it almost brings tears to my eyes that he condones the good behavior. He condones their perseverance, their endurance. He, he celebrates those things. He says, but there's this one thing more than anything. I want to be first. Mm. I want your passion and your fervency. I want our friendship to be cultivated more than pursuing good works and activities and religious stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. That's nice. But what I'm after is first love. Mm. And that is what resonates with me right now for myself and for my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, that he doesn't want us to just play church. Mm. He wants us to have a real thing going on with him with our, where our hearts are turned toward him. And he's so good that not only does he want it, but he's the one who instigates it. Mm. 
Like if you don't have the passion, like if we're to be honest, that sometimes we go through those dry seasons mm -hmm. where we're just like, yeah, I, I ain't feeling it. Right, you know? right. We're reading the Bible and it's just like words on a page. Right. We're praying right. and we feel like it's bouncing off the ceiling. Like we don't feel a thing happening. Mm -hmm. We can go to our good, almighty, loving, caring God and know that not only is he powerful enough to change circumstances, he's powerful enough to change our hearts. Mm. And sometimes the biggest miracle he does is not outside of us. It's in us. Mm. He starts making you want something mm. that you didn't want before. Right. And not having a taste for things you thought you'd always have a taste for. Mm. He's grand enough and loves you enough that he can stir fire in you mm. that you did not have before. Wow. Yeah. Priscilla Shire is here. Um, what I always love to do um, when I have my guests on as well, at the end, I always like for my guest to do the salvation. Well, <laughs> it is, you know, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, mm -hmm. that you shall be saved. He did all the heavy lifting. All you have to do is receive the gift. Mm -hmm. So do you usually do a prayer of salvation? I would like, if, if, if you don't mind. I would, would really... love to do that. Oh, this is I amazing. would love to do that. I'm going to say a prayer. And yes. if you're on the other side of this interview and um, you're not sure the words to say, I'll just give you a soundtrack for what to say. You could just repeat after me, but there's no magic in the words. You have to believe in your heart what you're about to say. Okay. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner and I'm in need of a savior. And I believe that you are that savior. So today I place faith alone in Christ alone to remove my sins. Take up residence in me in the person of the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I really <laughs> appreciate your words and everything um, for you sharing uh, this time on the platform. The Forge, amazing movie. It's happening. It's happening. Yes. It's going to be a amazing movie. Your role. Amazing. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your role. Um, I surrender all out right now. Yeah. Is it uh, uh, another New York Times bestseller? I, I mean, presume? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but you know what? Whatever, whoever the Lord, if it's six people or six million people. Oh, yeah. my gosh. I just so want his name to be glorified and God's people to be encouraged. Priscilla Shire, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, it's Trendsetter Sense, and this is Chosen Journey.